Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Northampton Planning Board meeting of February 8th, 2024. Um, I'm George Kohat, the chair. We have one applicant before us today, um, and then a, uh, a few ANRs and other administrative details after that hearing is uh, closed or we move on from it. Um, before Traditionally, before we start the planning board meeting and the, the official business, we open up for any comment that the public would like to make not uh, bearing on the agenda item that's before us, which is a site plan review for a, uh, a project in Florence Center. So is there anyone in the audience or on Zoom who would like to make public comment? Please use your raise your hand feature on Zoom. Please use the chat as we accept only written chat comments from the Zoom audience or step up to the mic here in council chambers. All right, hearing none, seeing no chats at this point, um, we'll move on. And uh, I'd like to make one quick comment. There's not a large crowd here in council chambers, but um, we need to be mindful. We've learned a little bit that uh, the acoustics aren't as dreamy as we would like them to be in this chamber. So if there is audience here, we need to, the board members need to project a little bit. The mics we have here are pretty much for the Zoom audience, um, but we don't have any amplification for the council chambers. So, I mean, it's not pertinent for this evening as there's only three people from the public here, but for other nights, and we'll keep reminding ourselves of that. So thank you very much. Um, so let's move on. We'd like to open up a, a major site plan review for a mixed use building by Guarang Patel at 81 Maple Street, Florence, map ID 23A-067 and 23A-068. And this is a site plan review, so it needs a simple majority a vote of four of our seven members. Um, and do you have a presentation for us? Yes. Terry Reynolds, T. Reynolds Engineering. I'm here with Greg Patel and Dan Bonham from Douglas Architects. Um, so uh, with that, I'm going to jump right in. And um, I need some enabling from the host. There we go. All right. So, um, this the, what what's being proposed is is to build a three story building on a lot next to one hundred uh, eighty one Maple Street. Uh, so it's this lot here, the vacant lot. Um, that previously had a, a single family house on it that was been demolished a uh, number of years ago uh, when, they, when the gas station was sold and cleaned up. Um, so uh, what's being proposed here is, as I said, a three-story building at 63 by 62 and approximately 4,300 square feet um, of, for a footprint. Um, Basically, this building is going to consist of a commercial uh, space on the first floor, along with the two-bedroom uh, apartment unit. Uh, second floor is going to contain three one-bedroom units and two two-bedroom units. And then uh, the fourth floor is going to be four two-bedroom units, right? Third floor. Third floor. Yes, we skipped that one. <laughs> well, you just total those uh, units for us again. So there's going to be ten units total. Um, so uh, the this project is going to utilize the existing parking lot for 100. It'll be shared parking between the two. Um, we've done the parking calculations for these two uses. There the Building at 100 is a two-story 
office building currently, uh, about 7,400 square feet. Um, and doing the calculations, basically, between the two buildings, we're required to have 43 parking spaces. Um, we are asking for a reduction in that, as there is additional on-street parking uh, in the immediate vicinity ar around the building. Um, so uh, what is being provided are 32 spaces. Uh, there's existing 33, but we need to add another handicapped space uh, in front of uh, the unit right here. Um, there, there's a, a planting plan put together with uh, some street trees uh, here um, and here and here. Um, so those are, uh, what were they? Kusa dogwood and uh, green uh, Zakova in the front here. Um, and then additional plantings, uh, just uh, planters out in front. Um, originally, we had some uh, additional stuff proposed here, but uh, with further review, it was deemed that this would be better reserved for future um, possible um, seating if the restaurant comes in. Um, so these will be just potted planters across the front, bike rack in front. Um, we have a patio paver system wrapping around, providing access to the back. So you have three retail or commercial entrances, one here, one here, and one here. And then we have a, a residential entrance in the back here and an emergency egress in the back here. Um, so, and uh, so, then utility wise, uh, we're addressing stormwater by adding on a stormwater system in here um, that's gonna connect into the existing stormwater system for the rest of the building. Um, it'll be a subsurface system that basically collects all the roof runoff from the building. Um, the calculations, you know, we are managing uh, the runoff so that we do not exceed the existing runoff coming off of the site uh, with the stormwater system. Uh, there's no need for an additional water quality because it's coming off the roof, plus there's a water quality unit right here in line uh, going out. Um, Going to be looking at utilities, sewer coming off of Maple Street located here. Um, these may change a little bit depending um, but this was, you know, coordinated with DPW. So we have a water service that splits for domestic and then fire service right here. And then the sewer coming in here. Um, electric, uh, currently we're looking at electric coming to a pole right here. That's probably going to be pole mounted transformers at this point. Um, space is really limited. Uh, we do not really have much of any space to put uh transformer pad on site here. Um, so that's so that's likely where we're going to fall is pole mounted coming across the building and then with all the services um, and meters on the back of the building on this left side here. Um, um, so we did have some comments around lighting. Uh, so we the building is has a fair amount of uh, uh, static lighting, um, and I'm going to let Dan talk about that along with with the building itself. Um, we are meeting the lighting code for the foot candles, with one exception, right by the residential. Um, it's just over five. It is under this awning that's proposed here, so um, I don't know if there's flexibility on that. But if if that needs to come down, we can remove a couple of the window lights. To, to drop that down. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. Oh, um, and I'll talk about the lighting that's out there. There's currently 15 foot pole lighting for the parking lot. Uh, to bring this into compliance, we are replacing all the all the pole fixtures out in the in the parking areas. Um, the existing wall mount fixtures on 100 are to remain as they are not excessive in the intensity that they're currently producing. 
Okay, no. I'll let Dan. Just to clarify before you move on, so you're not replacing the poles or iron poles, it's just replacing that head? Just the heads, yes. Um, there is a double head, and that's going to get replaced with a single head right here. So, And has our new lighting ordinance been adopted and is in effect for this project? Yes, and we've attempted to meet those requirements with this and the intensity. So do we have any light poles that are within 15 feet of the property line? We have an existing one right here. And then we actually, there are two existing um, here and here. And so our new lighting ordinance would say that these need to have a bug rating associated with them because they're within a pole height of the property line? They need to meet the, they have a backlight standard. Um, yeah. So they need to meet that so that there's a, so it's cut off at the property line. Yeah, these are all cut off fixtures. So have we, can you tell us what the bug rating is for these luminaries? Uh, I I could provide that. I do not have that right here. And we also have a, what is it now, a color temperature requirement of 2,700 Kelvin? Yeah. So these are all meeting that. Okay. You get to be our first test case under okay. the ordinance. Um, you know, and uh, we, we can provide that for you. Um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how we follow this ordinance we have. So is that, do they write that on the plans for us, Carolyn? Yeah, I mean, they. I asked them to revise the plans because they weren't originally meeting that. So these new plans, except for that, um, the entry lighting, that should still drop below, you know, not exceed the maximum. Sure, the foot candles, but, which is, we've yeah. always had that. So there's nothing new there. Yes. Yeah, so let's just, um, I just want to confirm the... Uh, the standard. Um, I don't want to be so, out of compliance with James Lomenthal. So, well, um, you know, unless you're waiving the standards, they have to meet them, right? So, um, what you can do is, and I'm just pulling up the final that was approved. Um, oh, those are street lights. Sorry. Uh, um sorry. Um <clears throat> right. So um they would have to meet the standard of a backlight of one, uplight of zero, and glare of two. So they would have to show that on their building permit. So you can just refer the the way to sort of make sure that this is happening is just referencing in the decision to submit the, the lighting specs on the building permit application to showing compliance with that. Okay. We don't know what it is, but you have to comply with it. No, no, no. I just read you what it was. The B1, U0, and G2. Yep. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. So I guess your your lighting vendor will have to supply. Yeah, between the lighting vendor and Dan, you know, because Dan's designing the lighting, you know, aesthetically. You know, um, right now, you know, Dan can speak to his thoughts on what that is, but between the two of them, they they'll coordinate on that. And as far as the site stuff, yeah, I'll, I'll weigh in. The five at the entry is just a matter of dropping a fixture or finding a different fixture where it has a color. So, and I think we would probably recommend that just so we can stay within our yeah. kind of stated so goals. Yeah, we just been teasing this out. Yep. Missed that one spot so far. Good. Any other questions on the site stuff? Would you? I'm sorry. Would you just go through the parking one more time? I think the calculations of the build out would be 43 spaces, and yes. you're going to end up with 33, 32, 32. Yes. So we're looking for. Uh, we're looking. So I, I think we need to uh, ask for a special permit on on for the reduction in parking. Yep. Um, it's a 25% reduction. So anything over 20%, it triggers a special permit, which means it needs five votes instead of the simple majority. And it's not a separate vote by the board. It's all wrapped into 
Unless you want to separate it out if, yep. yeah. And then just uh, ownership of these parcels, is this the same party, just two, corp two LLCs that yep. own the two parcels? So that's why we can share the parking? Is that what's happening here? You could approve uh, shared parking even if the ownership was not, um, what's the right word, the same. <laughs> um, however, from a zoning perspective, we look at it as one lot. So right now, because the ownership is the same, it's viewed from a zoning perspective as not sharing across parcels. If um, the applicant wanted to subdivide the ownership at that point, he would need to draft up, you know, an easement agreement um, for shared use of the park. But the, I thought I saw that's like two different LLCs, though. But it's under the same control, single control, so it's considered okay. the same from a, from the zoning ordinance perspective. Okay. Yeah. So um, everything you've said makes it sound like we're talking about one single parking lot. So another requirement we have is for uh, parking lots over 25 spaces, I believe, is to have electric car chargers, one. If you're building new parking. Yeah, well, I would argue that. This is all existing. So the idea is that you'd build. Parking for a new use that wasn't there before. But it's for the const I think the language is, and I can read it, is the construction of any park new parking areas over 25 spaces. And, and the idea is because if you're built digging it up, you can put the conduit in to um, to provide for future potential charging stations. But so they are, they are going to be yeah, they are digging it up all the way to the subsurface for the drainage. So picking up half of the we could recommend, we could suggest to the applicant that you put in conduit during that period for an, an, an electric station. But I think Carolyn's right. There existed spaces, even though they're being <clears throat> the grounds being altered, there's still the parking exists there already. But even for your own new tenants, you, I think they might want that amenity. I don't think we can say you have to install it for the CO, but that we would appreciate having the conduit in there for a future. Would that be a compromise? Well, I mean, not, I mean, not for me. They're asking, I mean, if they're asking for leniency on the parking number, yep. I'm not sure, I mean, like about trade. A trade off, yep. You know, saying I gotta have this, the, so just so you know, the language says for new or expanded parking lots that result in the provision of 25 or more spaces, one electrical vehicle charging port space for 15 parking spaces shall be installed. So if this were new or expanding to be 25 or more, um, they would put in conduit that would support two part, um, charging ports. but So they're expanding to 43 and then asking us for leniency back down to 33. So it's an expanded parking field that then we're granting leniency for. So I would look at it as a, for, as a parking field with 43 spaces. There's 32 spaces the 43 is just conceptual it's not it's what's required by zoning right but the 43 are never being actually created which is why they need a special permit right right yeah. i mean he chris is right the number is 43 in terms of what is required with what they want to build and so if, and with that 43 number, they would need two. Total of four heads. Two. two they'd need two he heads. Uh, but, yeah, this, this is tricky because they aren't requesting to build 43 spaces. They're requesting to finish, have the finished product be 33 once we grant them the waiver. 
<clears throat> so in existence, the reality is there would be 33 spaces there. You know, I, I, I would hope the applicant hears this discussion and wants to do the best thing for Florence Center um, and perhaps have two spaces there that have uh, EV charging stations. Um, that would be a nice little um, understanding of, you know, the, the reduction that we're, we are allowing. Uh, not that you, these are going to be open to the community to come in and park there. It's not a public parking space. We understand that. But I think between the two buildings and the number of automobiles, it sounds like um, two spaces. Before, before we, we uh, I, I just had this conversation with a, uh, a resident of Northampton, um, and I don't, I don't live in Florence, but if presumably there, there's going to be twenty cars parked on the street. What is the number? If we ten, ten, ten cars parked on the street, um, and separate from snow stuff and all that, that kind of thing. What? impact does that have like does 10 10 more cars have in this neighborhood and again i understand there's you know there's no one here to make an objection but i i am you know as someone who does have some properties and have you know and then there's other properties across the way that are that are you know, I'm I'm providing parking spaces, and they're not even sort of providing parking spaces. And instead, they're like parking in front of in front of the the property, in front of in front of these houses, where it makes it harder for my tenants to get in. Again, my my point is my point is that there is we are by allowing this. I'm not saying to not allow it, but that there's an impact on community of these t for these 10 10 spots 10 cars yeah yeah there is but i think our understanding and what we've done with other developments is to assume that not everyone who lives there is going to have a car and that it's right on the bus route and it's right downtown so their parking will be spread out at different times of the day um and that it's a public street so People can park along a public street whenever they want. If Lawrence wants to start putting in meters in order to enforce some kind of parking restrictions, so be it. But I don't think that's going to happen. So, yeah, Sam, I, I think we've kind of well, understood these. That I, 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 correct. I have not understood that. Yeah, uh, and I and I've been on record many times in the last years with my understanding of it um so uh i do believe that that a the that private de private developer making money on their development which they have a right to do using public public uh areas to do that is not something that a been a neighbor might have signed up for and, and I? I think we should be extra sensitive to that so i'm not saying we shouldn't yep. do this i'm just saying that i think that that's like the assumption that not everyone has a car is not necessarily fair to the person that was there before so I'd like to suggest we hold off on the parking, the big discussion until we finish the presentation and we'll bring it back up when we talk about that special permit or the, the granting of that. But thanks for bringing that up. Um, so do we want to move on to the elevations by Douglas or do we want to? Any other site issues? I have some other site issues. Do you want to go through those now? Not issues, but questions. Why don't we, do, why okay. don't we finish up on the site and then we can right. go under the building? So, what what is the requirement for open open space? Or I believe it's five um, percent. Is that correct? 
Um, it's um, based on the yeah. needing to provide um, um, landscaping and um, and planted islands. Um, and so you have that in the corner. Is that what you're zooming in on? Yes. I, I can't see it on mine. It's the upper left corner on the layout. It's five percent. It's five percent. Yes. And your calculations? Uh, it's greater than five. Okay. Um. Could you just so one of the the the. Florence Center is kind of a tree desert, so to speak. Yep. Um, and that has come up a lot during discussions with the, the Florence um, community. Could you tell me again what trees you plan on planting here and where they are? So um, there are two dogwoods that are being proposed, on one on this island here. Yep. And one down here. Um, and then there's a green uh, Zakova right here up in front. Um, and then, and then the rest is potted, potted plants, um, on the remainder. There's what one is... green area right here, um, but that has a gas line running under it. We're not sure exactly where it is. So we just didn't want to be putting a tree right there. How about that other pad up on, uh, on main street opposite right here? the Sicola? Yeah. That's a concrete pad for bike parking. It's never been identified as that, though. That's which where you're going to put your bike parking. Uh, that would be for 100, yes. So you don't have a. We don't have a bike stand there, or um, I wondered if the bike stand could go in that lawn area where the gas pipe. Could you put another tree in that concrete pad? No. I'm trying to find some spaces for trees here. I don't know what at the the look of a sacola is within 10 years. They're like a 25 foot tree, I believe. Right. Um, I realize that's tearing up the concrete pad and creating a, a tree um, cavity, so to speak, there, a landing area. But yeah, is that just the ramp end there? That, that is the ramp right there. Yeah, I, do, I don't know that it would work very well in terms of the space. Um, you've got a ramp coming up that comes up the sidewalk and that also comes into the front entrance here. That's that ramp along the side. It's, it's a, it's a very big pad. Um, um, okie doke. And along the, the tree belt to the, oh boy, I want to call it to the South over towards Murduff's jewelry. Uh, that would be on the east side. Yeah. It's yeah. That. It's a narrow grass strip. Yep. Uh, it's about five feet wide. Yep. Is there anything that we can put in there? Or are you worried about snow clearance and? Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I guess you could put something. It's a slope. I think you there's know, a gas line a... going underneath it. It goes all along straight the strip and then right it takes yeah and then it goes towards uh murder building from the back there is power going back there somewhere too yeah um so right where the green strip is in the front at the sidewalk you'll see a box that has the junction for the i think it's the gas lines that okay i didn't notice that when i was out there because along uh Maple Street, we're saying that there's not going to be any plantings there because of the possibility of a cafe in the future. Yeah, it's very narrow. There there wasn't great opportunity to start with. Um, there are street trees. Yeah, and there, there are existing street trees yep. along, along Maple. Yep. There's four of them, I think. Uh, well, there's two in front, and then there are two more um, to the south. Um, okay. All right. Thank um, you. Um, just on that note, sorry, I was just going to say on the, um, if you looked on the street view, I was just looking at on that strip between Murduff's and the, um, this property, there's actually a van 
backed into the parking space and the rear of it hangs all the way over that grass strip. So that might be a difficult area to um, think about trees uh -huh. in that five foot strip just because of potential it, damage. Yep. Okay. And the other grassy area is where the power pole is, the current power pole in that other corner there. Yeah. And so, you know, we've got the power pole, you know, it's potentially, you know, there, there are a couple things. If we can get it on, if we can get power on the pole, uh, Greg would like potentially to maybe put a, ga a buried uh, propane tank in that space in the future. If there is a restaurant usage, then it might. Well, that's going to be a problem. I don't know if we're permitting um, very uh, propane at this point in time, you know, because we're hoping to move everybody towards all electric. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll let you bring that up with the building inspector, but right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, so there's, but that, that space is sort of competing between that sort of interest maybe a transformer pad and you know in that so i guess it'd be ideal not to commit that to a tree necessarily All right done. plus plus along this whole edge right here is a row of trees on the adjacent property oh yeah they're all at, at the risk of sounding rude they're all garbage trash trees that are lined into the chain link fence you know they're not trees Really, but <laughs> that's not what uh, the tree warden would say. Yeah, well, he's assessing you for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okie doke. Um, as far as far as trees, the um, one of the abutters had you know you had a lot of support letters from the abutters, yeah. and uh, like, yeah. I think the ninety two had some issues with that one tree up on Main Street, um, blocking their sign. Um, yeah. and I don't know if you've had discussions with them on. I, I do how... want to mention that too. It's just that. They were very worried about. That's the only visualization they have for their business. Yeah, they have if a, we were to put a tree there, it would literally block the signs for people to see when they're coming through. They won't be able to find, you know. They have their directory sign right there. Yeah. So very small writings. So many businesses, and their one small sign because of the requirement, they can't put a bigger sign. So, and they, they, if we put a tree there, it's going to block their business visibility. Which would be an incentive to find other places maybe for trees? I... We, could, we could try. I mean, we don't. I think as we get moved more and more into this project, we could probably, if we are, if you guys are okay with it, we can move that tree to a different location. Um, there are no trees at all along that length of the sidewalk from your corner down to friendlies, I want to say. Um, but in the summer, we do a very good job of, you know, putting pl flower plots, even in the the uh, uh, bike okay. area too. Yeah. We do, you know, yep. in it throughout the whole yep. summer. I mean, we do make Florence look beautiful. Oh, oh uh, no doubt about it. But there's something about a tree 25 years from now when it is 25 or 30 feet tall and it's a forest. That kind of, I, I don't know how far to take this, but, uh, you know, we as a city, we're really trying to um, promote trees along our streets. Um, I, guess, for, I guess, you know, you're, you're competing, you know, you want to have adequate bike parking. And if you take that bike parking, put it over for this building, you know, now you don't have bike parking to that building. Uh, well, there's that grassy strip, that grassy patch on the Maple Street side yeah. where you could have the bike parking. Well, that's what you consider. Um, it, it, it's a small lot. We're trying to put a lot into it. I, I, I understand that. You know, we also like when there's 10 units, um, we also like to envision that there's a place for people to sit outside and enjoy their, you know, there's no green space here at all for any kind of socializing, let me say. Um, not that that's required, but uh, that's something that we certainly encourage. Sure. Um, and uh, 
Okay, so you have suggested to have three mature trees, not mature trees, but three trees planted. Okay. Yep. All right. So I think we will um, stick to that when the 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 final plans are done, that three trees are sown. And if one is moved, we still end up with three trees at the end of the day. Something. Okay. And, and, what, and they have to be this 25-foot variety? Well, we could stay with the with what's back here. Okay. Yeah. The dogwoods or the coast. Zakova. Okay. Tell me, so as you um, leave the site and you go on to Maple Street, there's a very funky curve for that curb cut, right? And the day I was there, there was a big SUV in there that was taking up half of the driveway. Um, there's another curb cut on the new parcel yep. that's not used. What What's going to happen to that curb cut? EPW has asked for that to be closed, so we will remove it and... Um recurb it with granite is there any way during this project to address that angular entrance because right now if a car's leaving and a car's coming in it doesn't work and i realize this well, we'll, went through the planning board not too long ago but it, with, in practicality with this we've tried to widen it a little bit so you'll notice that the curb's being relocated over there uh-huh uh so it's 22 feet consistently yep uh you know, there's there's not a lot we can do as it tightens up again um, over on the right side there, um, but yeah, we have tried to widen that a little bit. It wasn't it wasn't originally supposed to be as tight as it is currently. And you might want to sign it some of those spaces for con compact cars only. Not that that always works, but when you have a SUV or a pickup truck in the existing building, those spaces they come right out into the roadway, even mm -hmm. when you elongate it. There's a stop sign there, but it, it's hardly okay. visible. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's an existing garbage enclosure there that's screened. That's yep. going to stay the size of it is for both buildings. Yeah. Okay. Snow storage. Go right ahead. Well, snow storage ends up, you know, being along that grass strip to some extent. And, you know, there's very limited uh, back in this corner. As it builds up too much, it's just going to have to haul it out. What happens? I don't know how we address those in our conditions because I think what happens is that you end up taking up parking. not you, but the contractor ends up taking up one or two of the parking spaces with snow storage. And okay. well intentioned as you are, it doesn't get removed. It gets, and then we lose two spaces, and those cars go out onto the street. Park in Sam's front yard. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has a suggestion how we firm that up because it would come across it more than one. Um, there's very limited space. You can't push it across that green belt into the other driveway of Murduff's. Um, Just keep on pumping more carbon monoxide in building places with no trees. Um, I think in previous, uh, for previous projects, I mean, you see this pretty regularly that it becomes the, you know, a, a puzzle for the applicant to solve. They can't, um, you know, if there aren't enough spots on the street for the um, residents to park, then... You mean in the parking lot? Yeah. yeah. Um, if in the parking lot, so they're on the street, but then there isn't much street or street space or there's a snow emergency... That will put more pressure on the owner to get those spaces cleared out and move the snow. And I think that's typically how it's, you know, you um, in other circumstances where it's just residential and there's not a crossover of use, it's um, probably a little bit more of an issue that the owners really do need to get in there and clean out all the 
spaces, but I don't know that you've ever created a condition um, right. about that. So the burden is really on the tenants to make it known that I'm having trouble with uh, loss of spaces. In, in this scenario, you have office use in 100, so that's just daytime use. And then, you know, you have the residential use. So are you it, planning on allocating any of the parking spots or to residents versus businesses, et cetera, or it's just everybody can park anywhere? Eventually I will. It's just, I need to see what the flow is once everything is up and running, see which which tenant needs more of a need and then I'll afford it with that. I work, you know, I, I run bird store across the street, so I'm there 365 days. So I see that lot be emptied completely by four o'clock and it's empty until seven o'clock in the morning. Every day, weekends, it's like a ghost town in that lot. So it is a good idea to have a mix and that parking lot going to get the proper maximum use by having businesses use it in the daytime residentials will be able to use it after four o'clock. Okay. I didn't see any um, problem with that. I think we even cut the units down too, right? Before um, when we were thinking about it. I think it's a good idea. It's a proper number of units for residentials and the parking spaces that we have. I think it, we did thought about this very well. This is what we came up with. Thank you. Any other questions about the site? We could look at some elevations and then folks in uh, who are on the call, we will open up the public comment pretty soon to hear your um, comments. To chat your comments. Um, so, uh, well, first here's the, the floor plan. Um, to the left is the first floor. Um, you see the L shape um, is retail space, uh, sort of closer to Main Street. And then on the, the southeast corner will be the residential. And on the east is the residential entry. Um, and then the second and third floor are a mix of uh, apartment sizes. Um, there's Three retail entrances, two on um, Maple Street and one in the back parking lot area. Um, those The distances between those are compliant with zoning. I uh, forget the exact number, but I wrote it down here. Um, maximum distance is 40. We've got uh, 25 feet on Maple Street. My reading of the zoning code for the re uh, for the commercial storefront requirements are um, for the first 20 feet on Maple Street because that is what we address. So uh, that's the public way we address. So that would be the left side of the screen. Um, let's see, how do I? I can just scroll it down. Okay. Um, so the the upper right hand um, elevation is the west elevation facing towards uh, Maple Street. Um, you see it's divided into three uh, vertical storefront elements uh, on the mass of the building. And then you have two storefronts on the bottom that are uh, more of a commercial look. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you have uh, still very large open uh, windows, but that's within a, a little understated brick facade at that corner. Um, so we do meet the 60% requirement for glazing on the first floor. We meet the 30% requirement, well, it's a 20 to 40% requirement for fenestration on the upper floors. Um, and we have, let's see, we have uh, the vertical articulation of the bays. We have two 25-foot bays on either side 
and then a 17 foot bay in the middle uh, articulated with a change in, in cladding from six inch reveal clabbards to four inch reveal. And the rendering kind of shows how that corner uh, is addressing sort of towards the commercial area. Um, you can see the storefront wraps around the corner on the northwest corner, glazing around the two sides, um, entrance there, uh, bike racks in front in between the storefronts, uh, the second entrance a little further down to the right, and then, you know, hopefully uh, some cafe seating or something inside and you know, maybe even outside eventually. We tilted the building slightly um, because of the relationship of the property line on the south side and it being a rather tight site. Um, we tilted the building a little bit, which gives a little bit more space on that northwest corner, the corner that's closest to the view here. Um, so potential for some outdoor seating or, um, you know, informal gathering space there, people coming and going. Uh, I think that also will help with the sight lines, as you mentioned, on that um, exit uh, for the driveway. Uh, the building is uh, 39 feet, six inches tall. And... I think what else, what other features I can mention? Um, uh, well, anecdotally, I believe, and I'm still getting used to the new energy code, but I believe uh, provisions for car chargers are required in the new energy code as well. But I am, I'm just getting used to that myself. So um, I, we've been talking about it with the, the uh, electrical engineer, but don't want to make any promises, but... If you go back to those elevations, there, it looks like there's a, a, a utility platform or something there on the north exterior elevation. Is that on the left hand side? The that? upper left hand side. That's a canopy, um, which you can see in the lower right hand side. That is on the uh, eastern elevation. That's a canopy over the entrance, over the residential entrance. And there are uh, mini splits condensing units on, on top of that to keep them up. It, it's a very tight site, so not a whole lot of space. And we wanted to keep them close to the apartments for maximum efficiency so we don't have the long uh, distance travel for the line sets. We do have a few on the on the roof as well, but. Um, I'm sorry, does it kind of have a, a full basement for storage no, or no? No. Basement? No. That was our hope. <laughs> All right. So nothing on the roof. Not really. If you, there's three condensers up there, um, set back um, 15 or 20 feet from the edge, they won't be visible. Okay. Nice render. Thanks for watching. No, thanks. All right, if there are no questions for the board, we'll take public comment now. Um, first, we'll open it up to the council chambers room, of which there's no one here. Um, and then we'll move to our Zoom audience. And unfortunately, those folks need to uh, ask their comments via chat. And Carolyn will read them out. Okay. Um, so the first chat message is from uh, Susan Elena Esquivel. I would like to request that they are not given an exemption on parking spaces as a business owner at Parsons Block. The street parking is already taxed. We have classes during the day and the evening that rely on street parking. Parsons Block is still under renovation and we'll be bringing in a number of new businesses, a restaurant and 10 residential units would not leave parking for the existing businesses in the area. Um, and then... Um, Just one. Yep. Parsons Block is the bird store block. 
and the apartments are being renovated, but they always were apartments up there prior to this. They're just being renovated. Okay. Um, and then a comment from um, Ward 5 City Councilor Alex Jarrett. This project is in my ward, and I think it's an excellent addition to downtown Florence. I'm also in favor of the special permit for parking reduction. Shared parking between residential and commercial uses makes a lot of sense because commercial and residential usage patterns differ and are complementary. We also have a good supply of on-street parking in Florence, which has a time limit to encourage turnover. In addition, this lowers the amount of impervious area and the total cost of the project. Parking contributes to a significant cost, the cost of housing and commercial space, and has been shown to increase the cost of housing. Um, and then, um, let's see. Okay, and that's it. Great. How is the time limited parking? You know, are there signs that says two hours max? On I'd have to look up the code. I can do that. There um, are some streets that some have streets yep. on Main Street. It says one hour, like yeah. down by. Yep, and two hour places. Okay. Is there anyone that enforces it? <laughs> yeah, the enforcement. Yeah, the parking. Okay, Tulsa, Tulsa, Tulsa. okay. Yeah. Got it. All right, that's good enough. <laughs> Okay. Um, so other quite so that's all the public comment via chat. Um, other questions from the board? You said there was one hour parking in some places, right? Yeah, you yeah. can yeah. see that. Yep. Oh, down by the pie bar, no, that's one hour parking. Right. But yep. right. right across the street, it's one hour. Yep. Um, 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 and I would just um, we can read the that's referenced in the staff um, memo, but the code um, provision for the special permit um, section um, does talk about those shared parking spaces as counselor um, shared uses. Sorry, as Councillor Jarrett noted, um, specifically, um, I just had it. Sorry. Um, that uh, a, a special permit could be considered and granted to allow a greater percentage reduction over 20% where joint use of the same spaces by two or more uses or establishments is justifiable by virtue of the fact that the uses or establishments generate peak demand at substantially different time periods. Have, has that, so that's the standard. Has that changed with more people working from home? This section has not changed um, for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Carolyn, have we addressed the, um, we've talked about the lighting, but you had made two other comments in the memo about some of the design criteria, the glazing and the blank wall on the street facing facade have has that been addressed um sufficiently i haven't i don't i have a diagram that shows how i meet those let me email that did you oh, okay so you just you put the um, calculations in for meeting those standards i yeah i have an elevation um that i drew um but it's not part of the submittal correct it's not part of the submittal um, but yeah, I do meet those requirements. Do you have them on your thumb drive? Um, I, I have, a, I actually didn't, no, I, um, uh, no, I don't, okay. I printed a, a okay. copy with the rectangle here that shows, I think that's 37 feet and okay. the requirement is, uh, Where's the is 85. There it is. Um, right. So if you essentially, if the board is not considering a waiver, then the applicant would have to meet those standards. What is the blank wall we're referencing? The street facing facade. So on Maple on Street. On Maple Street. Right. So as we look at this, is it on the first floor between the two window sets? It's that whole. Yeah. Idea it's to, it's, it's on, on each second. story. Well, 
the place it would be if we weren't in compliance would be on the second and third floor between the windows. Right? You have the vertical windows there. Yeah. They'd be either the right or the left. So we have a, a vertical delineation between the two um, siding and patterns. Um, and then, in my opinion, that breaks it up. Um, we also have shear walls behind there. And my structural engineer is screaming at me for having too many windows already. Yeah. I know you guys don't care about that so much. <laughs> I mean, um, windows don't carry shear. <laughs> you could. Very expensive windows. <laughs> Guidelines call for more fenestrations than are, are here. No. No, no, he's saying he's meeting them, okay. but it wasn't clear. It wasn't identified in the submittal. Okay. So I wanted to make sure that that was voiced and, yeah. Good. you know, discussed. Um, and I guess part sure. of it with that is that there's, there's an awful lot of, well, this isn't even the entire list. There's about three pages of things and, you know, most of them are very clearly met, but I don't know, would you require a checklist or uh um, a diagram for every example on here to show that, or you know. um, that would certainly make it easy for the board. Yeah. I, I'm sure. <laughs> so next time you could do that. <laughs> but I I would be happy to submit anything you know that you need in regards to that. Um, the other comment, Carolyn, is the underground electrical connection near the public sidewalk. Or is it an underground connection in the back parking lot? Uh, yeah, hole? that's been revised. It was it was oh, okay. coming out of the front corner. Okay. Um, so that, now you're going to... It's not, it's not feasible to do that. Okay, so you're going to come off that pole either to a transformer cabinet or you're going to go aerial from a transformer on the pole to the building? Or will you come... No, out? no, it'll go underground to the building. Yep. The million-dollar question is how we get it to the pole of the transformer. Okay. Okay. And if there is a transformer located in that grassy area, then how and why, how we'll shield it or protect it. But yeah, and that's, and that's the challenge because, you know, there are required setbacks for the transformer. Yeah. 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 That's why I say in the pole mount, it's, it's seeming like the most viable option. Um, I just want to add a couple of notes that um, I noticed um, during the public comment um, about this, the street trees in front, they will need protection in accordance with the um, tree warden's requirements um, for public shade trees. Street. Um, yeah. And then the trees that you referenced, George, along the side in the chain link fence, at least on... Um, the street view look to be substantial. Those should have protection too, particularly if they're not on the subject parcel. So would that mean just putting a fence across that boundary? Well, um, you may need to pull it back a little bit to the drip line. I don't know what kind of activity is there, or at least protecting from um, staging and trucks going right up um, so I don't know where they are relative to the existing parking lot there. Are they behind the parking lot? And so we're on the adjacent park on the parcel. other parcel. Um, right, but abutting that parking lot, the yeah, existing parking yeah, lot. The green strips, you know, we were talking about um, there's the dumpster uh -huh. in the middle, and they're right behind that. They're behind the dumpster. Yeah. Is the dumpster moving? Yeah. Okay. So the dumpster might protect them. The dumpster <laughs> And it's appropriate to the kind of tree they are. Yeah. Trash trees. Trash trees. Yeah. Yeah. They're all rich trash trees. Oh, it's like they're well situated. That chain link fence that is currently divided in that property, is that your fence or the abutter's fence? Is it going to, are you going to do something else there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. So I'm sorry, Carolyn, to resolve that. There are, there are trees on the abutters property on the other side of this chain link fence, but we still need to safeguard them from damage. Well, it sounds like the, the dumpster <laughs> will protect them. Only part of them, because they run along that, that fence line. Um, 
And who is that about her? It's not, it's not the fire department, no, no. Valley Medical, their parking lot. Yep. Yep. So I doubt they're going to want to take up that fence and replant those trees or anything, but yeah. Okay. All right. Um, other questions before we uh, close the public hearing and then we can't ask the applicant anything. Do you want to work through this parking dilemma? The There are additional support letters too. Right, yep. We saw those, I don't know, they're in the public record. We normally don't read them aloud into the public record, but they're all in favor of the project. Um, I didn't see any that were opposed to the project. Um, there were some DPW comments, anything that's relevant to our lack of expertise in those areas to talk about? Um, no, they did point out the, um, as the applicant, as the as um, Terry Reynolds noted, the curb opening sh for the historic driveway there should be closed with granite. Um, and then it, most, the other issue, and they want the stormwater maintenance agreement recorded with the decision. So... Um, even though it's not, you know, it's just the maintenance of this infiltration system. And then other things were really utility related, just sort of um, notifying the applicant of what would be required when they come forward with building permits. So do we note the closing of that um, entranceway as a condition or as, okay. Yep. So in the parking calculations, how many spaces are we would we provide for the um, residential component of this new structure? Well, the residential um, requires one per unit, I believe. Could one per units under a thousand one square foot. Is that right? And these are all under a thousand. Yep. Okay, so ten spaces. Yeah. And the new. I looked up at least the provisional energy code, and that says wiring for future chargers 20% of required spaces. So I think I would feel okay if we provided conduit to a future designated area. So it would be one charger that has two heads, so supplies two spaces. It looks to me like you're digging up half the parking lot anyway to put the infiltration in. So if we put conduit, I don't think you want it right in front of the building. So if you put it to the other side where that long grassy strip is, I think I could be okay with that. Well, yeah. you, and you'll probably want it anyway in the future. I think yep. your residents would would like it. Um, and it might help you out with the energy code depending on how that shakes out. So I think that's probably good enough for me on that topic, if you guys are. So that's another condition. I'm a big fan of putting conduit in the ground. Oh, yeah, baby. It's torn up already. It's a lot yep. cheaper to do it then. Yep. Um, so, you know, any uh, more questions, discussion about the, the uh, suggested reduction of parking from um, 43 down to 33? I'm 32, I'm sorry. And so just so you know, the, in terms of the math, the 20% reduction by site plan would be um, for a reduction of eight spaces, and then 25% is this for this 11 spaces. Okay. So it's really three more spaces that were, yeah. No, I think the off-peak use is a good argument. I think that, you know, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yep. You know, and... Yeah, it, it, we're all hoping that a bustling restaurant comes in there, and if it does, it draws a lot of people from the hill towns and up from downtown Northampton, and then there will be a parking crunch at night, but that's a good thing in many ways, uh, especially if not everybody drives, but there will be a parking crunch, so let's see that happen. Unfortunately, you know. There's, there's no shortage at night. Yeah. Um, I would just say, um, you know, we haven't changed this provision for, um, you know, to um, for 
since before I was with the city. Um, but by the same token, um, we haven't changed the requirements for office use either um, since COVID. And so um, that that might, uh, right. you know, equal out that shift. Okay. If there are no other questions. Should we think about closing the public hearing? A second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Okay. Five of us, unanimous. Um, we could walk through the conditions, see if I've tracked them well enough. Uh, there's one provision to uh, close the uh, the entrance, unused entrance off of North off of Maple Street for the DPW comments. Um, another one is to submit revised lighting specs to the planning office um, and to mitigate somehow the lighting so that everything is below five, um, even at that entranceway. Um, adding an EV charging space uh, conduit or an EV charging station in the, on the property. That's, yeah, that Did supports two spaces. Support that supports two spaces, right. Protection needs to be provided to protect the, the street trees and also any um, salvageable trees on the abutters property. Or more maintenance, do we have to? Yep. And we need to record the, the uh, stormwater maintenance agreement to, uh, according to the city specs that spells out the obligation for regular maintenance of the infiltration system. And that text goes to the planning and sustainability also. And there's a staff recommendation about planters being filled seasonally, which it sounds like the applicant is already doing, but just just to add it writing in. that in. Okay. Yep. And then there's the uh um again I'm 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 not sure about the parliamentary procedure for this second for the reduction in uh um parking whether that's we bundle that in as a condition as a, or whether we vote for the special, the major site plan review, and then bring up the special permit. But. So um, it depends on, you can either make a motion to approve the site plan for the new construction over 5,000 square feet and the special permit for the reduction in parking, or you can take two separate votes. Um, the site plan requires um, four positive votes of the board. The special permit piece requires five. Okay. What would happen if we approved the site plan and then the special permit wasn't approved because you couldn't really build the site plan without the reduction? Um, that's a good point. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that would be problematic because you you would approve the layout, but they'd have to come back and show that they're you'd have to you'd want to yeah. know if you were not approving the special permit, you could potentially approve a site plan for reduction of eight or something like that. I mean, or you could just say no, you have to provide all forty three parking spaces. Um, so it kind of depends on what the board is thinking. We could do the special permit first for the reduction of the parking. And see how that goes. And if not, then we could actually continue the hearing, even though we've closed the public hearing. But we yeah, you wouldn't be able to continue the hearing. Continue it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's then take the special permit. Um, I'll just clarify the conduit piece. That's going to be part of the site plan. Sorry. Right. I move to approve a special permit for reduction in 25% parking or 11 spaces from 
43 spaces to 32 spaces at this project in front of us that I don't know the address. Okay. 81. At 81 Maple Street in Florence. Maple Street, yep. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any more discussion? All right. All those in favor of the special permit for the reduction in parking? Okay. It's unanimous. And now a, a motion to approve or deny the site plan with the conditions previously referenced. I move to approve the project with the conditions so eloquently laid out by our chair at 81 Maple Street. Motion's been made and seconded. Any more discussion? All right, all those in favor? And it's unanimous again. Um, so good luck, applicant. Thank you. Sure, you'll get copies of these conditions in better language than we offer tonight from Carolyn for you to understand. And uh, good luck to you and your Florence neighbors. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks you very much. much. All right. What else do we have? The classic A and R. All right. Good. Good. Hope we get your flash drives. <laughs> bye bye. There's one approval not required, which means it's not it's the applicant is requesting that um, the board endorse this plan as not creating a subdivision. Um, so subdivision approval would not be required. You can see on this too. Um, everybody know. Does everybody know where Linseed Road is? Okay, um, so um, if you go take Route 5 to Hatfield and you go to um, RK Miles, you know RK Miles here? Mm -hmm. And then turn left after RK Miles, that's Lindsay Road. That's still the same. No. Are we allowed to approve? Sure, it's fine. They can do whatever they want. You could all, if you take a left at the uh, nursing home up there, I forget the name of it, um, if, of opposite the state police barracks, and you travel all the way along, and that becomes Lynchine Road. Basically. That's Coles Meadow Road. Coles Meadow Road. Yeah. So on this plan, Coles Meadow Road is on the west side, and it loops around to Lindsay. So this property actually goes from Hatfield, has frontage in Hatfield, back to Northampton. So the dividing line goes through. So this part of the plan is in Northampton. Typically, when if there's split frontage and there's frontage in Hatfield and Northampton, both towns have to approve the approval not required. But this is, yeah, this is swapping back land um, between parcels. So um, the the part that's being swapped. So here's this dashed line here. That's the town line, Hatfield, Hatfield over here, Northampton over here. The swap is happening in the back. So that's why it's coming here to Northampton. So there's no, there are no new parcels being, cre no new parcels being created. They're just shaving off land from um, one parcel and giving it to another. This will allow what? More breathing room for the house. It to be entirely inside the lines for one thing. Yes. <laughs> and the driveway to be in the lines too. Yeah. It's great. I endorse this ANR more heartily than most. <laughs> this one makes a lot of sense to me. 
I move. I so move to endorse it. Motion has been made and seconded to endorse the A&R on Lindseed Road. Any this discussion? Is the good one. This is one of the better ones I've seen. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. So it makes sense. I like it. And then I sent you late breaking minutes. I don't remember if it was yesterday or today. Yeah. From January 22nd, January 25th. Yeah. January 25th. I move to approve the minutes of January 25th. I second. All right. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? I got a chance to read through them because I wasn't here. It sounded pretty entertaining. I understood them pretty well. Um, all those in favor? Unanimous. I was going to move to sage the minutes or something. <laughs> all right. Is there a motion? Is there anything else, Carolyn? We have no meeting uh, in two weeks. Correct. We're done until March. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn at 820? Second. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye.